Hi everyone, welcome to part 4 of Forensic Examinations for the Examination. Um, we've just covered timelines, we've, we've noted activity to do with a hacker profile, alright. Um, if you look a little bit further back, you, you'll see activity to do with the Utilman uh, file, um, the Utilman exe, the Utilman old, and the command.exe file. Okay, now in uh, the D Windows System 32 folder, all right, that's where we had a play around with those files which allowed us access uh, into the Windows system to create a profile um, and do a little bit of playing around. Now, if I just do a quick search, uh, pardon my type in, you're right, Utilman EXE, okay. Now, you can look at the these times and dates here, if I just show you quickly, we scroll right to the top, you get last written, last accessed, uh, changed or modified, and created, alright? Now, if you look at, uh, let's have a look, go back to the Utilman, right? we've got Utilman EXE and Utilman Old. Now, if you remember, Utilman Old was the original Utilman EXE. We renamed it so the system wouldn't see it and we made a copy of the command exe file and called it Utilman so that we could get a command shell up without actually logging into the computer. Okay. Now if you look at the times associated with the Utilman old file, okay, this is going to be the last written, this one here, this is last access, this is modified and this is created. All right. Now, if you look at uh, the modified time, you can see on the 2nd of August 2011, at 20 past 5 in the afternoon, this file was modified. Now, that doesn't mean the contents of the file has been changed. What it means is that the MFT entry for this file has been modified, and it has because we've actually renamed the file. Okay. Now, if you look at Utilman EXE, you'll see the same like 10 seconds later it's been modified however if you look back across these you'll see that all the times are the same so last written last accessed modified and created are all the same right which pretty much says that this file was created right then okay so that's a little bit suspicious in itself now if you go and browse to the command exe uh, file which We'll do a quick search right here. We don't want that one. We want that one. You'll see there, last access, 17-19-55. Alright? Which ties in with those times for the Utilman EXE file. Alright? So from that, I mean, you're making an assumption, obviously. I mean, we know exactly what happened. But a little bit of research on your behalf. And you can get a guess that this person has renamed, created a, a file called Utilman EXE at that time and it was a copy of this, alright? So you kind of get an idea of how they've gained access. Like I said, we've made a few assumptions and jumps, being, mainly because we know what happened, but if you do have the time and the resources, you could sit down and work that out, okay? So, next I'm going to show you the MFT uh, files okay um, what I've used is a program called analyze MFT alright now if you select that from the drop down menu what you will do is browse to where you extracted your MFT files to now I, now I put them on the desktop um, you basically double click on it um, I think it's gone for me now anyway but what you do is you would click on that file and open it and then it would ask you to name the output file you can call that whatever you want um, and what it will do then is create a file you can then examine that using um, now I, I say Excel but I'm using LibreOffice and that works just as well okay um, but you, again you would it's going to be quite a hefty file size so you're going to want to move it somewhere that's going to handle it okay which is not within this win this virtual environment so I'm back in Windows uh, sorry wash my mouth out I'm back in Ubuntu 
All right, and these are the two MFT entries, uh, the two M MFT tables that I've converted here. One is before deletion, and one is after. All right, I'm going to pause the video while I open them because they're, they're going to take a couple of seconds to get up and running, and then I'm going to show you the uh, the differences between them and, and, and what has happened, and I'm going to explain why our CC number dot file uh, dot text file can't be recovered. Okay, so bear with me on that. Okay, so what I've got here now is the after deletion output for the MFT table. Okay, now coming back to these record numbers or file identifiers, all right, like I said earlier on, zero comes across that corresponds with the MFT, all right. Now, if you're using something like a hex editor to look, or speaking of which, if anybody can recommend me a hex editor to, to look at things at like a disk level so that I can look at the um, you know the volume boot record, the master boot records. I would really appreciate it because I'm kind of struggling to find a decent one at the moment. Okay, um, so I, if you're looking at the MFT, uh, it, the file itself in a in a hex editor, if you remember, I told you that each file entry is a thousand and twenty four bytes long. Um, if you were to take the file identifier number. And multiply that by 1024 that will take you to that files entry within the MFT okay and vice versa if you were to find a file in the MFT and you wanted to know what the file identifier number was uh, you could just divide the the file offset by 1024 or lock in the actual data itself right okay so after deletion um, we can do a search for CC number, okay, um, and we will get the shortcut links to the file. All right. Uh, now this is three seven two two. That's the file identifier number uh, for the shortcut link file. File identifier shortcut. Uh, file identifier number for the shortcut link for the actual folder that it was kept in is three seven two nine. Pardon me. However, like I said. CC number dot text. The file itself, we might get another shortcut link, but the file itself you won't get. Basically, the reason for that is uh, no, we don't. The reason for that is because the contents of the MFT entry, if you remember me telling you, it was less than 700 bytes long, which meant that it could be written within the, the MFT itself, all right? So to save space and to be efficient, a file with less than 700 bytes worth of content will have its data written into the actual MFT entry itself, all right? Um, and that is what has happened here. We've created a CC number.txt file, the contents of which have been written into its MFT entry. We have then deleted the file, which marks up the MFT entry for that file as free to be overwritten. All right, um, and it has been overwritten by another file, and then the contents are gone. All right. If you were looking at some, if, if for example this was a movie file, which there's no way it would fit into the MFT entry. Okay, this MFT entry would be marked up for deletion. If it is deleted, if the actual MFT entry itself is overwritten with another file the chances are pretty good that the deleted file itself, the actual movie, is still out there within an allocated space that we talked about earlier and can be recovered, okay? Um, you know, this depends on things like... Uh, let me have a think. It depends on things like whether the, the file is written in contiguous clusters, um, you know, one after another, or if, it, if it's fragmented, then... Yeah, you, you, you're going to have a problem then, but um, in this case, like I said, it's in, it was in the MFT entry and it's been overridden. If I flip over to the other one, now this is before deletion, all right? Now if I do a, a search for cc number.txt, we are going to get a hit. And there it is, okay? This is our MFT entry for that file. And it was 3718. Now, if I flip back quickly to this one, there is 3718. All right. Uh, let me just line that up. Right. 
This is before deletion. There's our CC number.txt, alright? File identifier 3718. If you scroll over slightly, 41657 is the parent identifier, okay? Now, if you were to look at file identifier 41657 further down, you will find that it is the folder or the parent that the file was kept in, okay? Um, this refers to lost files or orphan files, which we will discuss in another video um, where a folder of files is deleted um, they then if, if if the MFT entry for that folder is deleted um, those files then become lost or orphan files because their parent folder is gone and the operating system the, the forensic system sorry the forensic software doesn't know where they belong it can recover the files themselves but not the folder so they become orphans or lost so if I just tab now over to after deletion, all right, 3718 is now iconcache.db. Now I've already looked at this, but if you were to find this file in the file system and scroll upwards, this actually belongs to the hacker profile, okay? So in, in the seconds that it took for us to access the file, delete it, and log out, this iconcache.db file has overwritten the MFT entry uh, in the MFT and we have lost our file okay so as I've said before um, we're not going to be able to recover the CC number text file however we've got enough evidence here to show that a person compromised the computer using that technique and that they deleted uh, the stuff the the CC number text file um, we've got a time and date for it um, unfortunately we can't recover the file but as I said in video one, it's not always a case of we recover files, it's that we show what happened, okay? So, I'm going to pause this again because uh, I'm going to check to see how much time we've got left on this video um, in case I need to split it. So, bear with me.